How do you funnel your troops in Clash of Clans? It is the most important thing in the game, but it can be very difficult. This video will teach you everything you need to know. From the basics, right of the way through the advanced techniques, there will be something here for all of you. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Judo Sloth. Let's start off with an explanation as to exactly what funneling is. In simple terms, it is the process of controlling your troop AI. If we were to take out the buildings to the top of the base and the buildings to the right of the base, that means we have buildings through the center that the troops can be controlled through. And that's exactly what you want to do, right? Get your strong troops into the center of the base. So in this example, we have a Pekka and Wizards taking out buildings to the north, Pekka and Wizards taking out buildings to the east, which again will allow our troops through the center. Now funneling is not just the buildings that you take out, it's also the buildings that you leave standing. If I were to draw a funnel, on the base here, notice that all of the troops, no matter where we deploy them, would collapse in towards the cannon and then move into the center of the base. And that's exactly what this video is going to be about, teaching you all of the different methods that you can use to make your troops do this, whether you're a beginner, right the way through advanced. The examples you see will mostly be at Town Hall 13, but they will be applicable for any Town Hall level. The principles are exactly the same. I'm going to show you one example from Town Hall 9 to start off with because this is the most basic way to funnel. This is Funneling 101, the Golems and the Wizards. Essentially what you are doing is sending in a tank style troop in order to attract the fire from the defenses. Now this doesn't have to be a Golem if you're a lower Town Hall level, it could be a Giant. If you're really just starting the game, it could even be a Barbarian, but something to attract the defenses fire and then you have your stronger, higher damage troops behind, in this case, the wizards. Their job is to take out the buildings whilst they are free from the defenses. Otherwise, they might easily get sniped off. Now, in this example, we are taking out buildings to the northwest, but also down to the southwest so that our main push in that of the heroes will come into the base itself. Now, whilst it's important to note that sometimes your heroes might batter through the wall in order to get in, you do need to have access, otherwise there is a chance they will walk around, especially if it's a ranged troop, such as the Archer Queen. The other point I want to make in this example is you don't need to make the funnel larger than it has to be. So in this example, taking the buildings out up to the Dark Elixir Drill, and even at the bottom here, just a couple of the mines was enough to push the troops in. Because remember, it's not just the buildings you take out, it's making sure there's buildings there and access is open to them to attract your troops in. You want to try and set up your funnel as cheaply as possible. That might be using troops such as the wizard to snipe off buildings out of range of defenses, but you also want to be time efficient. That's why a wizard has high damage. It is a good troop to use over an archer, let's say. Here it is able to take out just a couple of buildings, but that's enough to send our archer queen up and around the base exactly what we want. Whilst I have already been talking about efficiency with these techniques, and I will continue to do so, I want to provide you with a nice summary at the end of the video that really gets a little bit deeper with this, tells you exactly why you should use some of these techniques over others, and how to use them as effectively as possible. If you are new to the channel, I would recommend subscribing and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss out on my educational but entertaining Clash of Clans videos. Now, one of the most effective effective funneling techniques is the baby dragon. It is so simple to use, just drop it, it will take down the buildings in an area, but it also gets its enraged bonus. When it's not in the radius of any other air troops, it will do extra damage. Now you might want to supplement this with a balloon or two. It might be able to take out an archer tower, such as this example, whilst the archer tower is shooting at the baby dragon, but you are also checking for black bombs. All also remember that some of the troops are targeted to defenses, meanwhile one of the other benefits of the baby dragon is it will take out anything. So here it allows the Archer Queen to get straight in towards the town hall. 
If you are a Town Hall 7, you've unlocked your Barbarian King, just know that he is a brilliant funneling troop. Although for Town Hall 7, you probably want him in the centre of the base, so this might be as you go higher up. However, for high level play, he's actually one of the best funneling troops. He's incredibly easy to control because his pathing is very predictable. However, there is one situation which can be tricky, and I've chosen an example to show this. It is when there are two layers of buildings on the outside. So notice how there is not just one layer, there's actually the cannon and laboratory a little bit deeper. Now, if we want the Barbarian King to walk up towards the top of the base, you actually need him to walk back on himself first. So deploy him to the gold mine, he will move to the dark barracks, then to the laboratory before moving to the cannon. And from this point, he's then going where you want. However, if you deploy him the opposite opposite way, he could very easily walk back on himself. Now this is where the Barbarian is so good look. With the ability, he's able to take out all of the buildings on the outside, meaning that the Queen can come into the base exactly as intended. There is no way she's going to the outside because the buildings are already gone. It might be starting to become pretty clear, but you can use pretty much anything to set up your funnel. You just want to try and do it as cheaply and effectively as possible, but you could commit more troops to it if you are getting defenses. I'm just showing you the more popular ones. Have you thought about an Electro Dragon? With its chain value, it can actually get really good damage and sometimes get buildings that are deep into the base as well, which can actually be quite important. As with the Baby Dragon, if it is free from air defense, it will get really good value, especially as I mentioned, if it can chain. So here it gets a number of defenses and actually is unfortunate not to get the scatter shot. However, it's really important because it actually takes down buildings on the inside of the base as well. And with bowlers, they will then come right into the center. Now, why is it important to get buildings on the inside of the base? Because ranged troops might still be attracted to them. Archer Queen or bowlers might actually be attracted to these buildings if it is the nearest one to them. We are gradually moving up from the basics through to the more advanced. This one used to be really popular, but base designs have kind of caught up to it. However, always be on the lookout because it is super powerful. Remember when I mentioned the Barbarian King and sometimes how there are two layers of buildings, you have to be able to take out both of them? Well, that is what the Bowler Bounce can be brilliant for. As long as the first building has the same or greater health than the building behind it, you can use the bowler to bounce through and get both of them, which is super important for setting up that funnel a little bit deeper and therefore allowing your troops to come around because they might be attracted if you can't get both layers of buildings. Now I want to give a quick shout out to the Clash of Clans communities of the forums and Reddit. Most of the replays you see here were from Team Forums versus Team Reddit. This is actually the fifth time they've done this. I've taken part a number of times myself, but both communities, brilliant for Clash of Clans discussion, strategy, both will be linked below. I think it's important to just remind you guys as well to not forget about the super troops. They can actually be really good for funneling. In this example, we have the super barbarian to take down the mortar. The only other troop that I can think that might have done this is the balloon, but the super barb and the sneaky goblins can be really good for funneling. Now, I want you guys to remember that it all depends on exactly what you are trying to funnel for. It might be that you can use your actual troops that you want to get into the base to funnel for themselves. Probably the primary example of this is the Archer Queen. Now, she is a ranged troop, and you've got to bear that in mind when you are planning out her funnel. So she will stand back from buildings, take out this gold mine, for example, but she wouldn't move from the gold mine to the dark elixir drill as let's say the barbarian king would because if the barbarian king was standing here next closest building that he has access to is the dark elixir drill but this is where you have to consider the troop you are using to funnel the archer queen being a ranged troop will now walk slightly this way until she is in range of the dark elixir drill to the right but then she will also move inwards because being a ranged troop she can 
shoot over the wall, so the next closest building is the air defense, and she will target onto multiple buildings at the same time. So here she is able to funnel for herself. But this actually opens up a whole different conversation, which I will move into now, which is access into the base. I know we referenced this previously, but let's say where the Archer Queen is now. If the wall breakers did not open up access to the wall, it was a good chance she would just walk down to the Archer Tower, because that would have been the next closest and easiest building for her to get to. She's within range of it, however, because the walls are open, once she takes down the Lava Hound, she will actually be able to move into the base and into the Town Hall, which for this Queen Charge is the primary focus. So remember, it's all about the troops you are using to funnel and what you are funneling for, but also you've got to remember getting them access to where they need to go. So we can actually teach you two techniques I wanted to show within this one replay. The first one is the Grand Warden. Now the Grand Warden has greater range than the Archer Queen. I actually did a video recently all about the Grand Warden walk. If you are interested in seeing that, I will link it at the end of this one. But you could use your Grand Warden by himself just to snipe off buildings. And there's many defenses that he can actually outrange to snipe off. Now, a very popular method is, as I mentioned, the Grand Warden Walk. So that's where you use healers on the Grand Warden and he will snipe off the buildings in order to create the funnel. Then he is very easy to control as long as you deploy troops within a 10 tile radius of him or in a nutshell within his aura, then he will be drawn to them troops and wherever you want him to go. But this is where I was talking about access to the base. Always make sure that as you are setting up your funnel, you're getting that access when you need it. Whether that be the wall breakers, a jump spell, or in this example, the earthquakes, which provide access directly into the center of the base. Now, all of the buildings on the inside, the troops can be attracted to because they are open. If the walls aren't open, some troops might be attracted in there. For example, the Royal Champion, Hog Riders, anything that can jump over the walls. But as long as you open up access, then it's fair game. All of the troops will move in there and you've got to think about how you are going to control them through the base as well. So what do I mean by access through the base? This can actually be quite difficult to teach, but it could be what makes or breaks your raid. We already have talked about getting your troops into the base, but what about making sure you are funneling them through the base? And that's where the getting access comes in. It's not just a default of opening up as many compartments as you want. In this example, we have the jump spell in the center, providing us access directly through and to the opposite opposite end of the base. However, note that it does not provide access into the area with the air defense and the cannon. There's a very important reason for that, and it's so that the troops are not drawn off to the side here. They all move in one smooth movement through the base itself, and we keep the troops together. They get through into the dangerous defenses. If they start to split up all over the place, you lose your DPS. You want to keep your troops in one smooth movement. So they move through the dangerous defenses, they keep together and keep that DPS, and they're all also doing it at the same time as the hog riders across to the other side, meaning that everything's working together. One of the expos was tanked onto the main troops in order to help the hog riders. So pathing through the base is along the same lines as maintaining your funnel throughout the attack. Not just in the beginning, making sure to control your AI right the way through the raid. This is strictly important for troops that are attracted to anything, such as dragons or miners. I'll show you the miners after the dragons. Now, whilst this is relevant to any troop, hog riders, balloons, they're a little bit easier to predict because they're attracted to defenses. For the dragons, we've already created this funnel where they can come into the base. However, notice that the base fans out a little bit, meaning that they would start to split up towards the end. And what we want in this instance is to control them down towards the six o'clock air defense. 
that is where the bats are used over to the right hand side they will spread out take out the defenses and not only do they get really good value because there's not any splash over there they actually help to control the dragons and keep them on track in one swoop exactly what we were talking about before again this is really relevant to miners you can use the stone slammer that you slightly seen in this replay but it can be relevant to let's say hog riders as well but obviously that is more or targeting the defenses. I'll actually just quickly show you an example setting up for the defense targeting troops before we get onto the miners. It's really important, in fact, if you are going to be using a strategy such as the Lava Loon or, like I said, the Hog Riders. Ron Mexico does a brilliant job here carving out the area to the south of the base, not just getting really good value, but taking out the defenses as well because the balloons being defense targeting troops can now be drawn up and around around the base in the form of that lava loon attack strategy. Now we do send balloons in from the bottom first, but why exactly do we have balloons coming in from the left as well? That's because we need to set the funnel of defenses to control the main pack up and around to the town hall. So it's relevant for where you want your troops to go, but also you might decide to send a small area into a certain part of the base so your defense targeting troops don't even have to go there. For example, if you thought there was going to be giant bombs in an area, it would prevent the hogs from going over the top of them. This replay is also great because it allows me to teach you two educational points within the one attack. I will get into siege machines to funnel a little bit more in a second, and I did a video on siege machines explained, a basics through advanced tutorial like this, I'd highly recommend checking it out in my videos. But the Yeti blimp is one of the most popular strategies at high level play. Now whilst the primary objective might not be funneling, it is actually to take down buildings buildings trying to get the multi hopefully the scatter shot in this one it doesn't go down but we get the other defenses in the area and we also lure the clan castle troops but it also sets up the funnel guys for your archer queen which is really important don't forget that because it means you can control your archer queen very easily perhaps with a baby dragon as we mentioned right at the start of the video you've then got the pathing for your queen but actually what we are going to do in this example is use the miners so here is our barbarian king used to help control the miners but the point i want to raise which is quite an advanced point is to use natural funnels now what do i mean by natural funnels these are ones that the base design allows you to have now you've always got to consider if there were hidden tesla here however if there's not notice how there's a channel in the middle of the base we've pretty much got two areas to the base we've got one area across to the left and one to the right hand side of the base the miners are naturally funneled we only need to funnel the right hand side because the left already has this little channel whereby the base provides the funnel so make sure you are looking out for that in base designs you might be able to take advantage of a flaw in the layout in terms of funneling using the siege machines, your siege barracks is the best siege machine to do this. A lot of people will use the siege barracks as part of a yeti smash style attack. You deploy the siege barracks and because of the P.E.K.K.A. and wizards coming out of the clan castle, they're able to just take out the buildings in a certain area and that sets the funnel. You've also got the yeti blimp example we showed you, but you might actually want to set up the funnel for the siege machine machine, particularly the stone slammer. Now this might be done as part of an electron, so basically you're using your heroes to take out the defenses around the area you're sending in the stone slammer. Now you could send in the battle blimp, but there's always a risk of hitting a tornado trap, there's always a risk that you hit a tesla farmer, something like that. However, the stone slammer can actually do damage en route as well, so if you can use the stone slammer as part of your electron, if you funnel for it, you can actually get better value. I feel like we've covered a lot of points in this video. I still have a couple of really important ones to share with you, but I just want to say thanks. I really hope this one has helped you out. And if you do want to support me, you can do so by using code JUDO in game. It really is appreciated. Now we mentioned the queen walk and how to funnel her initially, which here we used with a couple of balloons actually to get good value. But I want to make sure 
that you are aware of cutting off the funnel on the opposite side. So basically what this means is using troops once you set the funnel and your queen is walking to take out buildings in front of the queen to spin her into the base. So this is almost like a little bit of a queen walk into a queen charge. Remember a queen walk walking your queen on the outside, a queen charge sending her onto the inside and to the town hall. So make sure you are cutting off the funnel to allow your troops back in over. Now I want to bring a little bit of a summary to you because I've shown you a lot of techniques in this video. What I want to make sure you are aware is that you want to think about the cheapest way to set up your funnel. Always start low and scale up. That's my advice. Start low, scale up. Can you set the funnel with just one wizard? Do you have to progress? Do you need something to tank for that wizard? Can you use a baby dragon? If it's not a baby dragon, do you need some loons? Do you need to progress up to a pecker, maybe the e-dragon? Start low, scale up. You want to do it as cheaply as possible, but you also have to factor in time. There's no good using three housing space in terms of three archers if it takes you 30 seconds to take out a couple of buildings, that is a huge amount of time. So you want to be cost efficient and time efficient. Also appreciate that it might be a combination of techniques we talked about. It might be that you can use a wizard and a baby dragon in loons in order to get that funnel. So make sure you are thinking outside of the box with it as well, guys. I really hope this one has helped you out in terms of a basic through advanced tutorial for funneling. If you do want to see the Grand Warden Walk tutorial, I'll link it on your screen now. Also, if you're interested in the All Siege Machines Explained, I will link that one in the description. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next episode.